Good morning and welcome to day 21 of Vlogmas. It's December 21st, which means it's the solstice and I'm so excited. Happy winter solstice to everybody. Happy winter sol solstice squirrel. Um, so that means it is the transition into winter and it's the shortest day and longest night of the year. And it's a pretty decent winter solstice here. It is totally foggy, the sky is completely gray, and it's cold, and it's wonderful. So for today's vlog, what I thought I would do is go through and show you all of my FOs that I did, that I made in 2020, knitting-wise. I do, and crochet. I do have, I'm sure, have some sewing things that I finished this last year, but I am not doing those. So. <laughs> We're just gonna do knitting and crochet and I've gathered everything together. There are some things that I don't have either that I don't have anymore because I've given them away or that I just can't find <laughs> or that um, I didn't put in my Ravelry notes. So I am going based off of my Rav Ravelry project page and I filtered it by everything finished in 2020 and I'm pretty sure there's some things that I've made this year that I just didn't put into Ravelry. So who knows? But for the things that I know I've made that I don't have with me and that I have pictures of, I'll show you pictures instead. So I'll start off with what I'm wearing and I won't talk too much about this because I finished it really recently and I've talked a lot about it and I wear it a lot right now as you may have seen if you've been watching Vlogmas. This is my Mazzy cardigan. I knit this out of... All right, I gotta go let the cat out. Okay, I knit this out of Harrisville Designs Nightshades in the Insomnia colorway, and it is black with kind of shades of olive throughout it. I love this cardigan. It's wonderful. It's a pattern by Elizabeth Smith. It's like my new favorite thing that I've ever made. I love it. I love wearing it. I love it. The next thing is something that I, and I think I'm kind of going in reverse chronological order, so this is the most recent thing I finished. The next thing is a whale. So it's a stuffed whale by, uh, she's known at Sherlock on Instagram. I got my cheat sheet over here, it's my computer. By Susan Claudino Aguilar. And I don't have this anymore because I sent it off as a gift to my friend who was pregnant for her baby and I never took a picture of it. <laughs> but if you've seen the last couple podcast episodes, I think not the most recent one, but the one before, uh, and I'll link up here to it. You can see it in there if you're interested in seeing what it looks like. Uh, it was a really cute whale that I knit out of some blue handspun and yeah, that was great. My next three finished objects I also don't have to show you, and it's because I can't find them. I lost them immediately after showing them on the podcast last time as finished objects. So <laughs> I went through a short-lived uh, washcloth phase. I made three washcloths out of some like Red Heart scrubby yarn that I bought. And actually, now that I'm talking about it, I think I might know where they are. Let me go, let me go look for them. I think I know where they are. I totally just found them. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So I'll link to that episode up here in case you're interested, which you're probably not because I'm going to show you right now. But I showed them off as finished objects in that episode. They're scrubbies, and then I could never find them, so I never actually used them after that. And I just realized it's because I put them back in the project bag where I had intended to make more from because I still have more yarn. So anyway, let's show you. This one is the Grandma's Dish Crop... Okay, this is a long name. Grandma's Dishcloth, parenthetical, Grandma's Second Favorite. So, 
that's this scrubby. I was using it as um, a washcloth in the shower. I knit this out of Red Heart Scrubby and held together with Knit Picks cotton. So that's this. And then I made the Scrubby Set, which is a pattern by Be Hooked Crochet. And the two patterns that come with that are this one. This is made out of just the scrubby yarn. And this one, which is also made out of just the scrubby yarn. Now this is Red Heart Scrubby. This is Red Heart Scrubby Cotton. So this is a polyester and this is a cotton. And the idea behind this yarn is that it's got these like pigtails coming out of it from every which way. And it's makes it more scrubby. So here's what I have left over of the purple. I have almost the whole skein left of the yellow. Wow. And I have a little bit left of my Knit Picks cotton. And I also just found my very favorite scissors, which I lost, which apparently has just been sitting in this bag. These are some, I think it's Merchant and Mills is the company. And these are my favorite scissors of all time, like my favorite snips of all time. I love these. My favorite scissors of all time are Fiskars. Fiskars everything 100%. <laughs> From regular scissors to fabric scissors to like gardening shears. I love Fiskars. Anyway, these are my favorite snips and I had lost them and it's because they were in this black hole of a bag that apparently a bunch of my lost stuff was in. So that's those finished objects that I th didn't think I was going to have to show you. My next thing that I finished was a pair of socks. So this is a pair of vanilla socks that I knit out of Murray & Co. Wool Goods in the Love Letter colorway. And it's just a top-down vanilla sock. Here's the other one. I knit these on a size zero needle with 64 stitches. Heel flap and gusset, my huge. The next project was this pumpkin. So I made this pumpkin right before Halloween. And this is a Knit Picks pattern called Spice Pumpkin. And there, it, it's a free pattern that has this knit pumpkin and a crochet version in it. And I made this out of Farmer's Daughter Fibers. And it's in there like, either Pishkin or Pushkin. I don't know which one it is. But it's, that's the base, and it's a DK weight yarn. It's a non-superwash. It's like Wyoming wool or something like that. And I'm in love with this pumpkin still. I made this like as a Halloween autumn thing, and I had it sitting up on my mantle during autumn time. And now it's pretty much just turned into a toy for Lucy. She really likes it too, but man, I love this pumpkin so much. This is a great pattern. If you ever want to knit a pumpkin or crochet a pumpkin, I highly recommend it. It's, I just, I am in love with this pumpkin still. It's amazing. I love this pumpkin. Okay, the next thing is the project that I made right before that pumpkin. That pumpkin was made out of the leftovers from these mittens. And this is a pattern by Diana Walla. It's the Alice Mittens, and it's made out of that same Farmer's Daughter Fibers yarn. And I really, really like these mittens. So... It's just a really beautiful colorwork pattern. I love the pattern of this because it feels to me very kind of 70s vintage. That's kind of the vibe it gives, gives me and my color choice was inspired by that aesthetic. So I really like these mittens. They've come in really handy this winter. I have my very favorite pair of mittens that I knit, that I knit, that I knit quite a long time ago. Uh, it's a white pair of mittens designed by Helen Stewart, and those are still kind of my go-to favorite mittens for when I'm just out and about on walks and stuff. But these have definitely been climbing the ranks. They fit really nicely. I think I altered the pattern and went down a needle size to make them more snug, and I'm really happy I did that. They did that. They fit really good. So, and they're super warm. Mm, I just, I love this yarn so much. I got this yarn at a Stitches West that I went to, I don't know, some time ago. 
And it used 50 grams of each skein, and I still have leftovers even after the pumpkin. I bought 50 gram skeins, is what I meant to say. Okay, the world's simplest mittens are my next project. So this is a pair of mittens that I knit for Lucy. It's a pattern, a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. And it's just a basic mitten pattern that goes from baby sizes to adult sizes. And I knit these using leftovers from another project that I'm gonna show you later. And this is Knit Picks Swish DK in the Sugar Plum colorway. And these are really great. Um, they're definitely getting to be too small now. She still wears them. Uh, she really likes to wear mittens when we go out on walks. And pretty much the thumb is getting to be too small. Like if the thumb was a little longer, they'd probably still fit pretty good. But I think I just want to knit another pair of mittens for her that are the next size up. Uh, I think that would be good. So these are really, really great mittens. I definitely recommend this pattern if you're looking for something, especially for kids or something. They're just so simple and easy and quick. And also the pattern's written for any weight of yarn. So any gauge, you can use anything you have. You can use leftovers, so yeah. And man, I apparently am noticing a theme where I make something and then I immediately make something else with the leftovers because my next project <laughs> that I finished right before those mittens are these stuffies that I made for Lucy. Those mittens are made out of leftovers from this stuffy. This is the Hugo the Couch Potato Monster pattern by Rebecca Danger. And I added these horns. These horns aren't in the pattern. I added these horns to make them into the monster from a book that she has called... What is the book called? It's been a while since we've read it, so I kind of forgot. It's called Because I'm Your Dad. It's by Amit Zappa. So in that book, it, there's a daddy monster and a baby monster, and they do stuff together, and this is the daddy monster, and this is the baby monster. Uh, it was a great pattern. Um, it's also written for any gauge, so you can use any weight yarn, and you just adjust the needle size. This one was knit out of Knit Picks Bulky. This was knit using the same exact pattern with DK. And that's the difference. <laughs> so these were really great to knit. I gave them to her for her birthday this last year in July, and she really likes them. The next thing that I made was also for Lucy, and there's something that she totally does not wear. So I knit her a pair of socks. This was um, just a plain vanilla sock with the Fish Lips Kiss heel which I really like doing for Lucy because I really enjoy doing the fish lips kiss heel, uh, but I haven't in the past enjoyed how it fit me. So with Lucy, I'm like, it's fine. I get to knit them for her. I did recently realize though, because in my last full podcast episode, I talked about just sock heels and kind of how I've been wanting to try different ones, but that I don't like the fish lips kiss heel for myself. And a couple people mentioned that the Fish Lips Kiss Heel has an option to add like a mini gusset, I think, to it, or just extra stitches that you end up decreasing at the end to make it a roomier heel. And so now I think I might try it again for myself, which is cool. But anyway, uh, these socks were knit for Lucy out of some leftovers that I had in my stash. This was, if I'm remembering correctly, some Sweet Georgia yarns. The colorway was something like strawberry picking season. And it was a club colorway from like 2010 or something like that. <laughs> so very old yarn. I finally knit up almost the last of it. I still have a little bit left into these socks. And Lucy doesn't like wearing them, which is fine. Um, I think when you're knitting for a little kid or a toddler, uh, especially your own kid, I think you just have to recognize that sometimes they're just not going to want to wear what you make them, and that's fine. I don't care that she doesn't want to wear these. Um, but they're really cute. The next project that I made is called the Star Stranded Cowl, and I knit this using a quarantine kit that I had purchased from Rumpel Stillskin Yarn in Sacramento. And... Uh, 
it was a really, really beautiful and fun pattern to knit. I used Quince & Co Owl and Spin Cycle, which was the first time and only time I've ever used Spin Cycle. And those were the yarns that came with the kit with this pattern. And it was a great knit. I loved it so much. And what I did was I knit it and used the finished object and the leftover yarn as my Patreon giveaway prize for that quarter. So somebody hopefully is out there wearing that cowl, keeping warm. That yarn was really beautiful. I pretty much get the hype behind Spin Cycle. Um, still totally not motivated to like knit a sweater with it or anything, but I get it. I get why people love it. And it was really great like using it that one time. I think that satisfied any itch I might have had to try Spin Cycle. Um, okay, my next project was really exciting for me. It was my very first ever hand-dyed self-striping yarn from Moonstone Dye Works. So this is another top-down vanilla sock, and this was in my Moonstone Dye Works's Old Fashioned Love colorway. Old Fashioned Love colorway. <laughs> Old Fashioned Love is a John Fahey album, so, who was uh, an instrumental guitarist, I guess you could say. And I'm not typically that into just like instrumental guitar work music, but his style was wonderful and kind of unique. And I really like John Fahey's music. Anyway, um, so it was my very first self-striping that I ever dyed. And it's a gold and a, like a dusty faded mauve and also like a dusty faded sage. And, oh. Uh, I love them. This pair of socks is really special to me for that reason. And I do still dye self-striping yarn occasionally. It's uh, it's a very labor intensive type of yarn to dye, especially when you don't have certain equipment, which I don't. So I think if I had certain equipment, it would be less labor intensive and it would be easier to do more often. But since I don't have that equipment and probably won't get it. Colin's been trying to figure out how to like make some equipment for me, but uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but I'm still going to continue dyeing silk striping yarn. It's just rare. <laughs> so I'm hoping to have another self striping colorway come out maybe in January or February. Maybe I should do a Valentine's Day self striper. I actually really wanted to do a Christmas self striping yarn. I know, right? How bitchin' would that would that have been? But I didn't, because I just didn't have time. I, yeah, I had a lot of Moonstone Dye Works projects that I really wanted to do for my holiday update, and I got most of them done. The only thing I didn't get to do was the self striping, but that's okay. So anyway, <laughs> I love these socks. Again, just like the other ones, they were knit on a size zero, uh, 64 stitches, heel flap and gusset, and I love them. My next finished object, which I think we're getting into like summer and er like earlier summer months now, was the Del Sol. And this is a tank top that I knit out of some yarn, which is called Rock Yarn's Best Friend. And that is a cotton wool blend. So this is a reversible tank. It's a pattern by, sorry, Veronica Job. And so one side has a V-neck, the other side has a scoop neck, and it's a cropped um, split hem tank top. It was knit, well, it was knit in one piece, but it was knit flat. So you knit it from bottom to bottom and then seamed it up the side. And I don't wear this very much. I mean, especially now because it's winter. But I wore it a few times in the summer, and it really just doesn't hang that well on my body. For one, it's just too short. It's just too short. I should have made it longer. And I can definitely still add length. I, did, I bought one skein of this yarn, and I still have uh, quite a bit left over, so I could add length if I wanted to. But... Really, it's, I don't know, I found this with the knit tanks that I've made. I think this might be the second or possibly third one that I've made. And they just never 
sit well on my body up here. So like this, it like, I don't know how to describe it. I really don't. But like where the tank straps come down and like, you know, so part of it is like this and then the other part is like this. So this part where it comes down here, it just never feels right. It never sits right. Like, I don't know. I don't know. That's super not helpful. <laughs> I don't love the way it fits though. And I've never loved the way any knit tank top has fit on me. I love them on other people. They're su I'm super inspired to make them because I see them and I'm like, that's just so cool. But yeah, I never wear this. So I don't know, who knows? Maybe I'll rip it out and it's something else with the yarn. It's really lovely yarn. It was kind of a pain to knit with though for me personally because it sheds a lot. It's got a very short staple fiber, which I'm pretty sure is the cotton. And so even right now I'm like going like this and it's like poof. So that bothers me, but I don't know, we'll see. Right now it kind of just sits in my summer clothing storage. We'll see what happens with it next year. The next thing that I made is another thing that I don't wear. And you might notice the theme, and it's something that I talk about quite, kind of a lot. I kind of don't ever wear any of the pullovers I made this year, like none of them. But the two cardigans that I made, I wear constantly. So anyway, this is the Weekender, and this was a really super fun knit. I loved making this. So this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's a pullover designed in worsted weight yarn. I used fingering weight yarn health double and I picked out four hand dyed fingering weight skeins from my stash and marled them. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to tell you the four dyers, honestly. Oh, you know what? I have a cheat sheet and I'm using it. <laughs> So definitely offhand, I know Sweet Sparrow is one of them. Uh, Beehive Yarns, Toil and Trouble, and Woolberry Fiber Co. And they're just all marled together one after the other. And this is a bottom up pullover, which is part of the problem. <laughs> also, if you've seen uh, me talk about sweaters and stuff, I don't like bottom up sweaters. And this came out too short, and that is why I don't like it. So. I knit it according to pattern, uh, but for me, it's just too short. If I'm gonna knit, if I'm gonna have like something oversized like this, a pullover, I need it to be longer. I need it to be like, you know, butt length. <laughs> and this just isn't, it's too short for me to wear as a wide oversized pullover. And I knit it according to pattern and I could have like measured myself and added length, even still going bottom up, but I'm just not that kind of like conceptual person. Like I need to try it on and see how it looks. And I just, I just can't do that with bottom up. And I just, I don't know, I can't decide on adding like a certain number of inches for length when it's just on paper. You know what I mean? I need to be able to try it on and see what it's like. So, oh, well, I have thought about, I've considered lengthening it after the fact and figuring, I've, I've looked up how to lengthen bottom up finished sweaters before. And I think essentially what you have to do is just pick up stitches, cut off the stitches below that yarn and somehow pick those stitches up to knit them the other way and then bind off. Um, I don't know, I wanna do it, I really do, but I don't know if I will. I don't know. We'll see. But it's a really beautiful sweater. I like it a whole, whole lot. And it fits otherwise, other than the length and one more thing, it fits really nicely. But it's too short for me. And also the neck hole, <laughs> is that the right word? The neck is way too wide. It's supposed to be a boat neck, which is great. And I really like boat necks. But for me, it doesn't... Um, it's so wide that it doesn't stay on my shoulders. So it constantly drifts off of one shoulder all day long. And especially with the length and like the way it's shaped, it just doesn't, it's not right. It doesn't, I don't like it. So if I redid stuff on the sweater, which I know what I would do because I've thought about it a lot, I would lengthen it and I would just 
take the neck opening right here and seam it up a little more. I believe this is a three needle bind off that seams up the shoulders. And I don't know how I would replicate that into the neck, but I would do something. I would just make the neckline smaller. So that is my weekender. I feel like I could knit this again and make it exactly how I want it, but I don't know if I will. Who knows? I don't know. Okay, my next project is my one crochet FO, no, one of my two crocheted FOs for the year. And this is a pattern by Kalisha Ryan, and it's the Just Feel Festive shawl. And this is one of the only two shawls that I made in 2020. 2020 was not a shawl year for me, or a sock year. The socks that I've showed you are the only socks that I finished this year. And this is only the second shawl I finished this year, which is, I don't know, it's just funny. I used to be heavy into shawl knitting. But this was a really fun crochet shawl to make. Uh, it's a free pattern, I think, on Ravelry. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking this one out if you're into uh, granny stripes in crocheting. It's really fun because that's what you do here. So it's a granny stripe bias sideways shawl or wrap and you hold two fingering weight yarns together and I think I just yeah I just use scraps so I think she designed it to be able to use admit minis if I'm not mistaken uh, but I just use scraps for my stash and I really love this shawl a lot I'm super into shawls or wraps with this shape because I'm more of a scarf-like thing wearer than like a shawl-like thing wearer. Even with shawls, I just wear them like scarves. So <laughs> I really love wearing this thing. It's awesome. I was apparently in a crochet thing for a little while because the next finished object I have is a crochet sweater. This was the very first crochet sweater that I ever made and I love it still and I'm super proud of it. This is the Spiral Sweater by Regina Weiss. I will try this on for you. And that's what it looks like. So I crocheted this in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. And I think it's, is it the Long John's colorway? I'm not sure. It's a red one. And it's really simple. I don't know crochet terminology, but it has those. <laughs> It's got these really nice like kind of big bell sleeves. It's got a shawl collar, which could have been better, bigger. I think I could have knit the next size up and been okay. And the back is a spiral. And the sides, it's all a circle. So it comes up in a circle like that. And it's got fringe. And I love it. I super duper love this sweater a lot. Okay. <laughs> So the next thing that I made was a hat, and it's a hat that I ended up being super happy with. This is like my go-to hat now. I wear it anytime I need a hat. This is the hat I'm wearing. So this is the September hat, by oh no, it's not. It's the February hat, and it's by Ganyan Osborne, and it was part of the Kelborn Woolen's 12 months of hats or something like that collection, where they published a free hat pattern every month I think it, it, at least every hat pattern is called a different month yeah. and I knit this out of Kelborn Woolen's Germantown which was the yarn called for I really wanted to try that yarn and I really like it it's like a really typical feeling worsted weight workhorse kind of yarn and I really really love this hat it has a folded over brim so you knit it double length and then do something to attach it to itself. I forget what, but it's something cool. And then it's just all over textured in these different texture patterns. And it's got a pom-pom and it's wonderful. This is just like the best hat I've ever made. I love it. I'm super happy with it. So that's it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, definitely recommend like this whole collection. I There are other hats in this collection that I really, really want to make. The next thing that I made was another pullover. 
and I love this pullover a lot. This is the Party Top by Abby Knits, and I made this out of some hand spun that I finished like immediately prior to casting this on. And that was some Classy Squid Fiber Co. in the After Dark number two colorway, and it was a bat. It was, I think three bats, three two ounce bats. I spun it all up. It's like my favorite thing I've ever spun. I, this was my favorite hand spun in the history of my hand spun. I love it. And uh, it ended up being, let's see, what does this call for? Like a DK? Yeah, this pattern calls for a DK weight yarn and I got pretty good gauge. Um, it's a cropped top down raglan pullover. And I do wish I had had more yarn because I would have made something that was a little more wearable for me. I don't wear this a whole lot. Um, I can wear it with like one or two different outfits and pretty much for me, like I'm comfortable wearing it over like a fit and flare dress and that's it. Uh, I don't wear crop stuff with pants because the only pants I wear are stretch pants and the only tops that I like to wear with stretch pants are like longer tops. So I can only wear this sometimes and only on a day where like I feel really good in my body, if that makes sense. And I can't wear it now that I'm pregnant. So, uh, but anyway, I I do really, really love this project. Just be, oh, this yarn is just like, this is like my dream yarn. It's also sparkly. I don't know if you can tell, but I don't know. I would love to get more classy squid in one of these after dark collection colorways, spin a bigger quantity of it and maybe make a cardigan or something. So. Love that. The next thing is a hat that I made for Lucy that she does not really wear. <laughs> so this is a Pearl Soho pattern. It's called the Top Down Ear Flap Hat by Pearl Soho. I knit this with leftovers from my, from a, like one of my favorite cardigans. This is Socks That Rock Medium Weight, which is the sport weight in the bittersweet colorway. And uh, it's a great hat pattern. It's just not something, it's just not one of her go-to hats. She has two go-to hats, one of which is, uh, it's in the same style and shape as this, except it's like store-bought and it's um, made out of fabric. And it's also red. And it's lined with like, like fleece. And it's got the ear flaps and the little thing up here that flips up and it Velcros underneath. And it just fits her really well and it's really, really warm. And when she does wear a hand knit beanie, she has completely taken over use of my sparkling cider hat. Uh, I made a sparkling cider hat quite a while ago by Kristen Lehrer and uh, she just stole it and now it's her hat. <laughs> so this hat doesn't get much use, but it's still really cute and I really like it. I actually just put it on her the other day because I just found it and uh, it's, I don't know, I don't know if she'll wear it. She might. It's, it's still a little big on her, so we got time. We got time. The next thing that I finished is called the Gatsby Shawl, and this is a pattern by Don Henderson. It was knit out of Moonstone Dye Works Crescent Moon colorway in my Merino single base. I don't have it. I don't even have a finished object picture of it. I don't know why I didn't take one, but uh, I sent this off to somebody as another Patreon prize. I think it was my very first quarter Patreon prize giveaway. So that was a really fun shawl to knit. It took two skeins of yarn, I think, or like a skein and a half, I think. And it was my very first time knitting bobbles, which I loved. And I, ever since I knit that shawl, I've wanted to make a sweater with bobbles in it. And there are lots to choose from, lots of really good ones, and I just haven't done it yet, but I want to. That was a really, really great, easy and fun shawl to make. Then I've got my nurtured sweater. This is another pullover pattern by Andrea Mowry, and it's another one that I don't wear. Uh, so I knit this using Dream in Color. Smushy, I think is the base. It's the worsted weight, and it's in the Chocolate Night colorway. I love the yarn a lot, and I originally knit this yarn into a Harvest cardigan by Tin Can Knits. Didn't like it, didn't fit right, so I ripped it out. Knit it into this, and I might rip it out again. 
This pullover also just is too short. Um, it's very boxy and cropped, and it's too wide and too boxy for the length for me. Uh, I would love a little waist shaping and I would love it to be a lot longer. So it's just, I mean, the style of the sweater is just not a style that I can wear comfortably. And I have learned that by now after knitting all of the cropped sweaters that I knit in 2020. <laughs> uh, so it's something I know about myself now that this just isn't a style that I feel good wearing. And I also knit it according to pattern. It's also bottom up. I think, yes, it's bottom up. Uh, I would love it if it was longer. Yeah. So, I don't know. A similar thing as my other sweaters. I I have a lot of yarn left over. I have more than a full skein left over. So, I've thought about trying to lengthen it. But, especially with the patterning, I just don't know if that's something I'm willing to do. So it's possible that I might just rip this out and reuse the yarn for something else because I really, really love this yarn and it has felt held up fantastically <laughs> to ripping out and being re-knit. So that's my nurture. It was a very fun project to knit. I liked doing it a lot. The next thing is another project that I don't have anymore because I gave it away as a birthday gift to a coworker, and it's the three color cashmere cowl by Hohi Locatelli. I knit it using three colors of Knit Picks gloss fingering. And uh, it was a project that I started years ago and it just took, I just put it down for a really long time. It took me a long time to complete. I finally completed it, gave it to my coworker. It's a birthday gift. And yeah, it was a great pattern. It was really simple and pretty fun. And yeah, it was a very, very popular pattern when it came out. Um, the next few things I don't have to show you. I had some socks that I had made for a friend of mine out of Wex, West Yorkshire Spinners in their bird collection. And it's a self-striping yarn. They were really great. They were really fun. And he has them now and he loves them. It's great. Uh, I also knit the Wild Feather Mitts by Cecily Glowick McDonald out of, I, um, I think it was... Cascade 220 left over in my stash, in my like scrap spin. Uh, this was another birthday gift for a coworker. The next and last thing I think I have to talk about is a flax pullover that I knit for Lucy. And I also don't have that to show you, and it's just because I can't find it. It's too small for her now, so it ended up in my storage in my garage. And I keep all of my hand knit stuff that Lucy has grown out of, all of her hand knit stuff that she's grown out of, in one place to keep it all safe and that sweater is not there. I think it just accidentally got thrown in with the rest of the clothes that she doesn't fit in anymore. So I couldn't find it. But it was a flax pullover, knit in hand spun, and it was great. Wallet fitter. It doesn't anymore. Um, is that it? I pulled this out because I thought I made it in 2020, but I guess I didn't. This is my ranunculus, to show you because I have it. This is another example of something that uh, I knit too short. I had to rip out. It was luckily top down. I ripped it out, knit it longer, and I used up all the yarn I had, which was Julie Aslin Nurtured Vine. And uh, it's still a little too short. I don't know. I'm just not a cropped pullover person. I've learned that about myself. This I think that's the big takeaway from 2020. I should stop knitting cropped pullovers. I tried it, and I enjoyed the process, but I think I'm going to stop. I think I'm calling it on the cropped pullovers. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything. At least that's everything I can think of and I kept track of, which is good because this is very long. I apologize. This is such a long vlogmas, but um, I hope you enjoyed seeing everything I made in 2020. It was a really great year for making for me. I also did a little bit of spinning, a little bit of sewing, and just lots and lots of fun making things. So I think overall my favorite project of the year is this cardigan. Uh, I would love to know what your favorite project that you made in 2020 was. Do you have a favorite? Do you just love all of them? 
or I don't know, do you have like a whole bunch of finished objects for the year or just like a couple? I would love to hear about it. Um, so I think, I think that's going to be it. Happy solstice. I hope your winter goes beautifully and I will maybe possibly see you tomorrow. Bye.